What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, your man's uh, Toxic Gamer 331, aka Joker, today. And if you couldn't tell by this mask, uh, today we are going to be ranking the 15 Batman villains that um, they should do next for the second uh, Robert Pattinson movie. Um, you're probably wondering uh, why I'm going to be doing this a lot is because this mask is kind of, uh, how do I say this? Very, uh, the cord is messed up, so I'm just going to have to hold it like this the whole entire time. Uh, and also, I might have to wipe my nose a couple of times because I'm kind of sick today. So, uh, yeah, excuse me for that. But, um, anyways, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, ring the bell for all notifications, and also feel free to count. But, anyways, uh, I gotta blow my nose before we start. <coughs> <coughs> yep, and I'm coffee too, so. And I might be sneezing sometimes, so that's a, your fair warning. <laughs> If you get sneezed on. Perfect logic, Lucas. Perfect logic. Anyways, back into the Joker action. You know, if you know what I'm saying. Um, for 15th place, I put Killer Croc. Uh, Killer Croc was in the Suicide Squad 2016 movie. Which was... How do I say this? Uh... Not very well received by most fans. Um, like, there were some shining lights in the movie. And Killer Croc was not one of them. <laughs> um, but, 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 I feel like they could make a very good story if they were to go this route and put it in the next proper patents in the Batman movie. Um... They could kind of do a little storyline like um, the Amazing Spider-Man with a lizard in in there, and make him this creature that um, didn't mean to be bad or anything. He just got insulted and stuff, and he uses it as an utensil and trying to prove out good and stuff. Hopefully, you guys can hear me well because I don't know if I can hear myself right now. So, um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, Killer Croc, not my, on my top one, so, or top five, so. Uh, 14 is another interesting one that I don't think a whole lot of people of, in, on my channel have heard of. His name is Flamingo. Um, he wears almost everything pink, and has a pink motorcycle, and all that. Uh, okay, I'm taking this off, sorry guys. I would have wore it the whole entire video, but my nose in it hurts. So, uh, yeah, let's not wear that. But I I'll just put it, like, uh, beside me. Uh, like, over my, on my hand. Um, for, what's probably gonna hold this one back for me and hold this one back for warner brothers period to put this on screen for their movie in the comics he kills people and eats their faces which is very disgusting and i probably that would breach the over pg-13 guidelines so, probably not the best route, but it would be kind of cool to have him on screen. Or just, like, as a little tiny part to the story. Like, l like a side villain. So, that, that, that would probably be the best idea, to put, plop him into Matt Reeves' universe for Batman. Um, 13th place is Bane. Now, um, for Bane, he has had, already had two different uh versions of himself in live action form for a movie batman and robin which 
was not well received at all and is known to be one of the worst superhero movies of all time. Um, where Bane just basically grunts the whole entire time and stuff. Then you have a way more well received role for Bane in Dark Knight Rises, which Tom Hardy killed it as the role and stuff. And instead of doing the more the muscle part, he does more the um, a crime boss vibe. But the thing with Dark Knight Rises is they make Bane a side villain. It's revealed later in the film. Sorry, spoiler alert. But th I feel like they could do that again, but not make him a side villain and make him uh, the main villain. And also can add an equal amount of uh, brains in the brawn. So add a little bit of both muscle and uh, thinking because he's one of the smartest Batman villains. <coughs> 12th place is Mr. Zaz. Um, he's technically the DC version of Killmonger where whenever he kills somebody, he uh, scars himself with his knife and makes a mark for that kill. So, yeah, I feel it could be a little bit interesting if they were to make him a um, uh, main villain. Um, he's already been used as side villains for multiple sh uh, shows and movies, like the Gotham show, which I have not seen yet, but I know he's a side villain. Um the most of the batman movies he's been used as a side villain but the arkham games explore him a little bit more which i feel like if they did it with this in the batman universe it would be pretty cool number 11 this one um, some people might not count as a villain but i put the red hood uh so pro mo probably most of you here know the death in the family storyline where uh, the second Rob, ever Robin gets killed and Joke, uh, Joker kills them and basically, yeah, uh, Ro secretly the Robin's not dead and comes back alive to seek revenge against the Joker and becomes a crime boss named the Red Hood. So, I think they could make something interesting and make him, like, the villain in the movie. So that, I thought that would be... Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, top 10, people. Uh, for the last five, I'll tell you what. I'll wear this mask for the last five. So, um, number 10, um, you know I mentioned about Killer Croc earlier where they could do the lizard Spider-Man kind of thing in the Amazing Spider-Man? I feel like they could do this with this character, Man Bat, who is trying to find a cure to something, basically. And when, when he's trying to find a cure, something goes wrong, and he takes a potion that turns him into a bat, which is that literally the opposite name of Batman. So, Yeah, I just think this character could be edited pretty well. Could be made pretty well on the screen, and they could make something look pretty cool with uh, this character. And also, you can feel a little bit of sadness for the villain and know where he's coming from. Number nine is Ventriloquist, who uh, is a person that suffers from uh, schizophrenia, where he has multiple personality disorder. But he doesn't really, uh, he just ha thinks that the puppet is controlling him that he has, which na is named Scarface, where he's leading him to killing everybody and making those decisions so yeah hang on excuse me <laughs> <coughs> sorry about that guys I'll, I'll, I'll probably be better tomorrow um but um yeah i know that uh he was in the gotham tv series and it was pretty well received but he gets killed off immediately that's why i heard but I feel like they could do something here and make it um, an interesting film for the Batman universe. 
Number eight is the Mad Hatter. One of the most underappreciated Batman villains, in my opinion. I would like the big ones. This guy kind of gets overshadowed. Overshadowed. Sorry, I cannot speak because of... Uh, okay. So the Mad Hatter, his real name is Jer Jervis Tech. And um, he is obsessed with the Alice in Wonderland book. And whenever there's a new Alice, he tries to basically make her come with him. And he makes ever he he even has a Tweedledee and a Tweedledum, um, and he has his own tea party and stuff, and sets his own traps for Batman. And I feel that this could be an interesting detective uh, thing, where he's trying to get one of the Alices back. From the Mad Hatter and try to end this um, massacre. Um, seventh place, I put Two Face. Same with Bane. Two Face has already been adapted to the big screen twice, and that would be Batman Forever with Tommy Lee Jones playing as him, which was not well received. Um, and then there was Aaron Eckhart playing Two-Face in The Dark Knight, which was very well received. And, yeah, I f feel that if they chose the right actor, he this would probably be similar to The Dark Knight, and this movie would be, like, measure, measure with it. So, um, and I could do a little bit of a dream casting here. I'll tell you who I think could be a good dream cast, uh, a, a good um, person to play him. Dan Stevens. I think that sounds quite interesting. So, for those who do, do not know who Dan Stevens is, in the live action Beauty and the Beast, he's Beast when he's human, if that makes completely sense. And then, if you're more Marvel fans or comic booky, um, he was the main protagonist in Legion, so the Legion TV show, and I think it could, um, that would be interesting. And then another YouTuber suggested that he play this character, which is Hush, which was, t uh, spoiler alert, uh, cover your ears, teased in the Batman movie, where they, um, where it's revealed that, um, Martha Wayne is a was in Arkham Asylum, and uh, basically Thomas was trying to cover it up, and then Riddler right wrote "hush" on it. So that's a that this one would be interesting too because um, uh, Hush and Batman were close friends in their childhood, I believe. So, and then he becomes uh, mad at him. So, hi, chime time to put this on again. And this, this is, uh, wait, actually, I got a good idea. This, uh, five, top five people. Um, uh, I can't see at all. Eh. I got like a tissue here just in case. Uh, oh wow, you guys can't see me at all, that's really weird. Um, for fifth place, this one's kind of interesting, uh, in a certain way. Uh, I think that they could do, uh, James Gordon Jr. Uh, for those who are brilliant with the comic book genre, to say the least, <laughs> for you, uh, in the comics, James Gordon Jr. later decides to turn into a bad guy and is super crazy and all that. And I feel like, uh, it. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Well, gonna have to do without it, I guess. Uh, and he decides to try and kill James Gordon and Batgirl. So, I think that could be very interesting. 
uh, if they were to do that, and that man is trying to basically turn him into a good guy again, but he doesn't, which I thought, think that would be very, very interesting. I'm trying to breathe in this thing, sorry. <laughs> uh, fourth place is the Court of Owls, which Robert Pattinson even said that he would love this to be in the big screen. <laughs> this came into the air, and I, was, it, I tasted it. That was very disgusting. I mean, but my behalf, sorry. And I totally agree with Robert Pattinson on this crime group being in the movie, which could be very, very interesting. Uh, we've already had some animated films with the Court of Owls in it, with um, which is Son of Batman or Batman vs. Robin. I might be a little a bit confused. Uh, but, um, yeah, they're really cool. Uh, they've been with Gotham in, like, centuries, so uh, I think that would be really cool. Um, yeah. So, I <laughs> Uh, top three! Top three! Yay! And then I can get this mask off! Woo! Three is... Scarecrow! Um, which... Was depicted in the Mar a DC film before, but they did what they did with Bane and Dark Knight Rises, and made him a side character and a puppet for the main villain. Which... If they were to make Scarecrow a great villain, they should make him the main part of the story and focus pick an actor that's very um star class and uh do all the CGI work and uh, I think it would really work. So uh it's kinda hard for me to think too because uh <laughs> and gunky, so. Two, number two is, which a whole lot of people would probably say to put in first place. And that is Mr. Freeze. The Heart of Ice storyline is one of the most, probably the best Batman in the animated series <laughs> uh, episode ever, where you feel sympathy for this villain, um, where he, uh, is trying to find a cure for his wife, Nora, and every hard rock he hits, he always tries to get back up and tries to find a cure anywhere, any, uh, thing necessary to do it. And I think this would be good, uh, to make a little sympathy for the villain. Number one is my personal opinion. I'm taking that mask off because that's really irritating. Especially with this. Um, First place is Professor Pig. And I sound like him already, so... Um, Professor Pig, uh, Laszlo Valentin, uh, for those who do not know him, is a surgeon who grabs random people walking in the streets in their day lives, and later that day, he does surgeries on them and removing all their organs and stuff and quote-unquote makes them pretty and uh, decides to turn them into these things called dolatrons which he controls with a mask that he puts on their face. So, and are pretty cool. And I think they could make this a really creepy villain and get some creepy vibes out of this. Um, and yeah, uh, but I think it might bridge PG-13 guidelines. Well, I mean, they've done some, they did some pretty dark stuff in the first Batman, so... Actually, I think this one can be PG-13, but, uh, Matt Reeves, that is my number one, if you should do it, but, um, anyways, 
Uh, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, ring the bell for all notifications, and also feel free to comment your lists down below. Um, I'll be uploading another video soon. And also, um, why so serious? <laughs> I'll see you in the next one, everybody. Uh, peace. <laughs>